Hello everyone, welcome back to Bleed Electrical. I am here with another interesting video on electrical drives. In the last video, you have already seen about the simplified trapezoidal speed time curve. Now in this video, I am going to discuss about the starting techniques used in traction motors. So let's get started. Now starting of traction motor. Only series and compound DC motors are suitable for the traction work because we all know that there is not a flexible speed control in case of AC motors. So we generally go for series and compound DC motors for traction work. And then with DC series motor, the current and torque produced at standstill may be reduced. And this can be done by strengthening the field or lowering the voltage or both. So generally, we utilize this strategy in order to get the desired speed torque characteristics. So initially, we lower the voltage and increase it gradually. Now motors may be placed in series, reducing the terminal voltage of each without any loss in the external resistance. Then we can use an external resistance in series with the motor to limit the starting current for a desired value. And we can do this by varying the resistance. The current may be kept constant during the notching up period and the back EMF is being built up. That is we are increasing the voltage. Then coming to two techniques of starting the traction motor. The first one is plain rheostatic starting. And another that we would study will be series parallel starting of the traction motor. So we will deal it in another video. Now let us concentrate upon plain rheostatic starting also known as notching. Now in this method what we do is we increase the voltage from zero value to the full voltage that is the normal value. And we keep the current constant. How is it done? It is done by adding an external resistance and then cutting it out slowly slowly. That means you are reducing the value of your resistance slowly slowly and the voltage is gradually increasing from the zero value to the full line voltage value. Now if I consider that the time taken is T seconds and the current is I ampere and line voltage is V volts then at this instant of switching on the supply, the back EMF is going to be zero. So the voltage will start building up and the motor starts rotating. Okay, so what will be the expression? It will be V equal to EB plus IRM plus IR. Now what is this? Here, EB is the back EMF. IRM is the, so, is the loss that is occurring in the motor itself like the armature internal resistance is there so the loss is occurring in the armature internal resistance is given by IRM plus IRR is the external resistance that we are using here we have IR as the external resistance so these two drops will also be included in the circuit so the formula will be V is equal to EV plus IRM plus IR now at the end of the starting period what will happen the voltage will be now appearing across the complete the complete line voltage will appear across the circuit okay because we have gradually increased it from zero to the full line voltage then what should happen then we'll get ev and this ev will be approximately equal to the line voltage provided the internal resistance the loss due to the internal resistance or the losses in the motor remain zero and plus we know that the external resistance is cut out subsequently okay as the voltage is increasing the resistance is being cut out so finally when complete voltage is there in the circuit that means the line voltage is appearing across the circuit what will happen is this resistance will reduce to zero okay so let us analyze this now the energy drawn from the supply during the starting period of this motor will be what energy is that is power into time so vit correct then energy lost in the external resistance because we are adding this resistance and we are gradually increasing the voltage so what will be the energy lost in this external resistance it would be the average voltage drop across the external resistance into current and into time so if i want to write down the formula what can i write it we can write it as v minus irm upon 2 but if i consider 
an into i t just as the formula is indicating to us but what about this i r m i said there were no losses if i assume there are no losses then the formula will reduce to v i t by 2 so now on voltage drop in series field and armature being neglected we get vit by 2 that means what the energy lost in external resistance is vit by 2 then let us take the energy utilized in the driving the motor it will be energy supplied minus energy wasted in the external resistance now what is this energy supplied we have already taken it out so vit is the energy drawn or energy supplied okay that has been given or the energy input so this is the energy supplied and what about the energy wasted in external resistance we have simply calculated here that is vit by 2 so let us subtract them both if i subtract vit half of vit from vit i get half of vit correct so let us talk about the efficiency what is efficiency it is output upon input so energy utilized upon energy drawn so what was the energy utilized and what was the drawn energy so here we have half of vt and here we have vt so simply substitute this so energy utilized is half of vt and the energy drawn that is we have taken from here we have vit so what will be the efficiency it is 50% that means when you use this kind of a starting technique it will be effective only for 50% of the efficiency it will give you around 50% efficiency so now let us look at the characteristics of the starting technique first of all let us see the figure for without losses across the armature and field now i am not considering any kind of a loss in the motor nor in the external resistance circuit so here you have this characteristics of v with respect to t in seconds so now let's see this upper part of the region will indicate the energy lost in the controller okay so the energy lost in the controller means the energy that was lost in that r that external resistance okay so it is indicating that part of the energy because where why the efficiency is less why the efficiency is 50% there has to be certain reason to it correct so the reason being that external resistance r but here i am neglecting all the losses that are appearing across the motor that is the armature losses and the internal resistance field losses so we are neglecting this so there is nothing over here and this bottom triangle indicates the energy utilized by the motor now similarly we have figure so this this if you want to find out the ev this is the value of ev over here then now let us consider the figure for with losses across the armature and field what will be the changes if we have losses across the field and armature so if i construct this diagram v with respect to time we get a margin over here this margin indicates the losses in the motor that is the resistance losses the internal resistance of the armature so internal resistance of the motor and the losses appearing across it so this is all losses taking place inside the motor then what about this upper part of the triangle this upper part of the triangle is indicating energy that is lost in the controller so this upper part of the triangle indicates energy that is lost in the controller and again coming to this bottom triangle it is indicating energy utilized by the motor now how is this characteristic beneficial to you in case if you are asked numericals you can simply solve and harness all kind of data from this particular characteristics so it makes it easy to analyze a traction motor if it is starting on this plane rheostatic technique so that's all for this video keep watching